If you just want to try, you can go to this website to download your own copy. The link is also included in the description of this video. If you have a Mac, you can follow my instructions to get your DEX working. Let's see how DEX is unboxed. So, once you downloaded the DEX folder, check what's inside. Open the folder and make sure that DEX.component file exists. This is what your Mac needs as a plugin file. The other BSD file is for Windows and this is the first mistake that I made. Open your Macintosh HD folder and select Library. Then select Audio and Plugins. Then select Components. Once you have the component folder opened, you put the dex.component file into this folder. Now, let's fire up Logic Pro X. If you have a different software, you should start up your software as well. When you open, you need to create a new track. This is where I made mistakes. If you don't create a track for text here, you won't be able to select text for tracks that you've already created. So, you need to create a new track for text. Select Instrument Plugin. Use the drop down menu Instrument to select AU Instruments. Select Digital Suburban. Finally, select Text. Once you created a text track, you see text as a plugin in the input section of mixing window. Click text and open up its window. Now we have text shown in its window. It looks very different to the DX7 Mark 1. To navigate, you can use forward and backward arrows on the top left corner to change patches. When you want to change a patch bank, click card at the bottom left corner. You will see a folder, Simpres FM, which is a default folder with 32 banks of text patches. But when you want to load your own patches or the famous DX7 factory patches, click load. A window opens for you to select a sys file from a folder. Select a file that you want to load and click open. Interesting is that the loaded file doesn't show up straight away. But text tells you that it loaded the file you selected. Now, I have successfully loaded the original DX7 Voice ROM 1 Bank A patches. I will explain in detail how the DX7 FM synthesis sound design process can be followed on text. I recommend you to go through my FM synthesis tutorial videos. You can learn a lot from those videos. We will look at priority parameters such as algorithm, feedback, oscillator, envelope generator, keyboard rate scaling, output level, to key velocity sensitivity. Let's look at algorithm. On the DX7, you get to see all 32 algorithm at once. Instead, you only see a selected algorithm on text. Like the DX7, text has 32 algorithm. Feedback is under the algorithm knob and it ranges from 0 to 7 the same as a DX7. Note that when you change feedback, you need to look at the small data screen located just under the text logo towards the bottom left corner of the interface. 
Let's look at the frequency. It is bundled at the top of each operator interface. There is a ratio slash fixed switch for each operator. There is a knob for each detune, coarse and fine parameters. Although frequency data is displayed in a small data screen for each operator, as ratio and detune are put together in one screen, this is very confusing. Also, detune is not shown when needs zero. Let's look at those parameters in detail. Frequency ratio starts from 0.50 to 31.00, the same as a DX7 Mark I. Fine can go up to 61.69, again the same as a DX7 Mark I. Fixed starts from 1.00 Hz to 1000 Hz, the same as a DX7 Mark I. Fixed fine can go up from 9.772 Hz to 9772 Hz, the same as a DX7 Mark I. The tune is ranging from plus 7 to minus 7 the same as a DX7 Mark I. We will look at envelope generator. Rate and level is bundled with a graphical display for each operator. Although useful, as graphics are very small, they are suitable for approximation of an envelope, not accurate and missing details and I will explain this in detail in the next section. Both rate and level are using knobs to manipulate data, which is displayed in the small data display at the bottom left corner. Both rate and level can be set from 0 to 99, the same with the DX7 Mark I. Let's look at envelopes in details. This is a two bells envelopes. When we look at operators 5 and 6 envelopes, they have level 1 at maximum 99. So graphs should show level 1 at maximum. Instead, both envelope graphs show a tiny white dot at the bottom left corner of the graph windows. This means that their level 1 is 0, which is incorrect. So the graph below is more accurate representation of operators 5 and 6 envelopes. Having graphical interface does not necessarily make it easier to control envelopes precisely. Keyboard rate scaling is located with keyboard level scaling. It uses a knob to control data which is shown in the small screen located at the bottom left corner. It ranges from 0 to 7, the same as the DX7 Mark I. Output level uses a knob to change its data which is shown in the small display at the bottom left corner. The data ranges from 0 to 99, the same as a DX7 Mark I. Key velocity sensitivity is located next to output level, and it uses a knob to change its data, which is again shown in the small display at the bottom left corner. The data ranges from 0 to 7, the same as a DX7 Mark I. There are other essential functions that you really need for the FM sound design. The DX7 has operator on-off buttons in edit mode, allowing you to precisely control how each operator behaves in the overall FM synthesis. I'm not sure 
where you can find this. Also, when you have six envelopes to manage, you need an echo copy function to copy envelopes to other operators. I'm not sure where you can find this either. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel for more great DXN demos and tutorials. Part 2 will be a definitive comparison of the DX7 and the DEX by accurately comparing sounds between the DX7 and the DEX using the famous DX7 factory patches as well as Power DX7 signature patches that push the DX7 FM synthesis further and further.